Hey everybody, I'm Elena and today I'm going to bring to you this look, this full-on look that I created all using uh, drugstore products, products that are really affordable and that are reach in at hand and that you're not gonna break the bank with by using them so if you want to see how I achieve this look and how easy it can be to go as natural or, or as bold as possible with drugstore products and affordable prices if you want to see how I achieve this look please keep on watching so first things first you guys uh, I've been using I have to tell you I'm still getting over this cold um, I've been using the Fit Me from Maybelline as well. Maybelline, what did I say? Maybelline, the matte and poreless, and it's starting to grow on me. I figured that I applied it wrong, you know. I tend to use the Real Techniques the sponge or the Beauty Blender, and I found that applying it with a um, makeup brush it wears more beautifully. So props to that. But when I wear something, when I want something really that you know that it won't defeat me or it won't let me down from the drugstore I go and grab the L'Oreal True Match here is call, called a Core Parfait and it's color 2N Vanilla and I'm just gonna add a couple pumps I have to say that well you all know that but when you apply foundation with a sponge it it takes uh, more product but still I like the finish now, you want to be tapping the foundation for a flawless finish for a long, long time. Like, if you are a couple of minutes doing this, the more the better. I gotta tell you, it's been a hot minute ever since the last time I sat down to film a tutorial and I used to, I tend to put the mirror, you know, way up here. Here you can see the brushes and whatnot. Mm, so it's close to my face and now it's not and whatever it's more you know it's not as easy but next up is a nice shadow primer I'll use the Milani eyeshadow primer and it is a really good solid primer I discovered this through Emily Noel 83 now I'll dab up the excess just a little bit with the beauty blender and as for concealer slash corrector I'm gonna grab, as you can see it's really well loved and I, I haven't had this for the longest time this LA Girl Pro Conceal in the Classic Ivory at first I was scared to use it, you know, because it, I suppose, you know, Classic Ivory would be my color match and it turned out to be a peachy concealer but now, you know what, it works uh, twice as good, you know, because it really works with my dark circle, so there's that I gotta place another order of this. Now we'll put it in place quickly with the sponge, makeup sponge. I was gonna say Beauty Blender, but this is a real techniques. Anyway, you get me. And now that it's in place, we'll start doing again the tapping thing. Okay, my tip to you guys. Um, you take a tissue paper, you got the foundation down, right? Um, you try to divide it in two yep and once you have divided it you take the sponge and you go all over the face and here we have all the extra residue of foundation that our face didn't need at all so it's gonna last longer and it's gonna look better now I'm gonna take the NYX HD finishing powder in the color banana and I'm gonna set the under eye area not bake just set you know we're not 12 Good lord, today I'm seeing myself pasty pale, I kid you not, when I see, when I look myself at the mirror, it just looks just fine, but with this lighting, I, whoa, like I match the, for, the furniture, maybe I need to get some sun, funny thing is, I use high SPF, you know, because uh, there's a history of skin cancer in my family, so, you know, so maybe that's why, you know, I'm not as tan, even though I go on a hike on daily. Next up, we'll take this Royal Techniques um, brow brush and a spoolie. And I'm going to grab this NYX Tame and Frame in the color Brunette. And this has really grown on me, you guys. This is a good, solid, all-in-one all product. And the only thing I can say about brow pomades is how come I never tried them before? You know, I thought this was a gimmicky thing, but... It really works. 
So eyebrows are in place. One thing that I can, uh, you know, a trick that I it works for me at least is when I dip on the pomade and whatnot. Instead of going all the way from here, from the inner corner to the outer corner, I start applying the pomade from here, from uh, you know, almost the pupil, a little bit, you know, on the iris and on the outer side and with the remainders that's on the brush without dipping it again on the jar I do the inner corner so it's not as harsh and it ends up looking I was looking myself at the mirror and it ends up looking more natural. Now today all I know is that I really want to wear a um goldeny smoky <laughs> many e's uh pinky uh look it's still a little bit dramatic you know it's not every day that i would with you i would be wearing this because if this was every day just every day simple i would be i would grab this and i would do over the lid uh crease outer corner clean the corners and call it a day with the pinky look and whatnot but I've been having this uh, trio from when while which is I'm getting sunburned from for quite a while right now and I haven't happened to use it already so I decided that maybe today I'm gonna put it to the test and will not see where it goes so uh, bear with me if this is not planned we'll see where it goes so we know a little bit here and there what I want to do but not even I know what I'm gonna do so first things first I'll shut up and I'll apply uh, you know the lighter shade in here on the all over the all over the eyelids next I'll take this top shade in here and I'll apply it on the crease and I'm trying to refrain myself from using just the blush nudes from Maybelline. I really dig this palette. Okay, now just to change a little bit, I'll grab this L'Oreal Color Infallible in the color Forever Pink. That it is surprised that it's being used. And it's this beautiful pink, shimmery pink, as you can see, with golden specks. Not as vibrant as the ones from Wet n Wild, you'll see that in a second. And I'll go on the crease area again. Now I'll grab the pink one, this really metallic pink from the... I'm getting sunburn and I will apply it, just kick up the excess all over the mobile lid. Create a dumb shape. See, for some reason I always tend to think but I'm, I always tend to be a little bit scared of using pink eyeshadow and then when I apply it I think it's really complimentary and it looks really beautiful on the eyelids and I think to myself why don't I use it why don't I do this more often but more often than not I look at the color and I think there's no way this is gonna work and then once I apply it like I just did in here I think well it's not that bad you know so I'll just move on to the other eyelid the thing that kills me is that I have one hooded eye and one eye that it's not hooded. I figure that you all seen this by now, but it bothers me because it's harder to create a look. Now I'll grab a fluffier brush and I will take this golden, this really, this is a really goldeny, golden, almost coppery golden shade, and I'll go all over the. We'll see, mobile lid with a light hand, just to, up to the crease. See, I don't want the golden just being golden. I want this um, to be sitting on top of the pink one. Not canceling, but adding, if you <laughs> know what I'm trying to achieve. Okay, now I'll take a fluffier brush and I will go into this rusty uh, reddish eyeshadow from here and I'll go on the outer third. I'll bring it up all the way to the crease and always remember to go light-handed I prefer to do it this way and if you have to build up or you want to build up later you can do so next up with this little shader brush I'll dip back into the pink one and we're gonna connect the gold and the rusty rose with the pink shade on the middle so it's gonna add extra light so it's gonna go from bluish to goldenish it's gonna be this gradient thing in here now I'll go back to this light pink, baby pink in here and with the same brush, it doesn't matter which one, uh, just a fluffier brush. I should have done the eyeshadow first for this look. There's quite a bit of fallout from the wet and wild. I'll go to the under eye area. 
Okay, and now I'll grab this rusty collar here, this pomegranate collar, just to the outer third, connect with the upper part. I'll take a clean fluffy brush and I'll dust stuff, all the eyeshadow. Very light-handed, because if you don't go light-handed, chances are that it's going to transfer on your face, so you really want to be sweeping it off. I'll take this fat brush in here and I'll go again with this cream shade, vanilla shade, and I'll clean the outer corner just a little bit on the brow bone area. I'm really digging this. You know, I thought there's no chance I'm gonna be wearing this on the streets. Oh yeah, you bet. After this I'm going to the mall, so... Next up I'm gonna take uh, Maybelline, uh, the liner, Master Drama, the liner Coal. This is really powerful, this is really good. And I'm gonna tight line the upper and inner rim, the upper and lower lash line, the, the inner rims. What am I saying? I'm gonna tight line. Okay, now I'm gonna take the Physician's Formula Eye Booster. This is a dupe. I think it's even better than the Kat Von D Trooper, the brush felt, not the felt, the brush tip one eyeliner and I'm gonna create some wings and I will be back. Okay, next I'll take the Max Factor Masterpiece Transform which is uh, equivalent to the CoverGirl Super Sizer one and I will apply one coat on the lower lashes one coat on the upper part of the upper lashes, a couple coats on the upper lashes the uh, regular way, and I will be back. Okay, next up I'm gonna take a fresh uh, NYC Sunny, you know, because I ran, ran out of the other uh, one that I was using, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of color back to the face, contouring slash 